What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like I have not talked to you in a while and that's because I haven't. I've been sick for like a full month. I got the flu two times, so that's been fun. If you're new to my channel, my name is Eshi, welcome. I do a ton of interior design and DIY, so I would love it if you would subscribe if you're interested in that. But today, we are here to talk about my infamous Ikea desk hack. If you guys have not seen my Ikea dual desk setup, I will leave a link to the video right here. But I am going to give you an update on how well it's kind of held up and if we've made any modifications to it. But also, I was really new to making YouTube videos back then, and so I may not have answered all of your questions fully. So I'm here to do that today. So let's go over very quickly on how we built this desk to begin with. We needed a desk that would fit two people and two workspaces, and we also didn't want to spend a fortune. So we went the route of using an Ikea hack. We purchased three sets of Alex cabinets, and within each cabinet there were five drawers. And then for the actual desk, we used a kitchen countertop from Ikea. It was the 98 inch Carlby counter. And don't worry, I'll leave links to everything down below. And to add a little cool aesthetic touch, we actually got risers to put on top of the Alex drawers that the countertop would sit on top of. Three sets of four risers each. So a total of 12 risers. And these things can be used as just risers to make your furniture a little bit taller. They can be used as furniture legs. Assembly wise, it was relatively easy. It's just putting together those three Ikea Alex cabinet door sets. And then with the risers, we just used four screws per riser and we put a riser on the edge of each one of those cabinets. So again, a total of 12 risers four per cabinet. And then with the countertop, we just set the countertop right on top of those risers. We didn't use any glue or anything to adhere the countertop to the riser because everything we were putting on top of the countertop, our computer desk setups, it was heavy enough to keep the countertop from like sliding around. The risers also had like these plasticky, rubbery top bits that kept the countertop from sliding around. So as a quick update to how we're using the desk now and if it's withheld the test of time, we actually built this desk back in Detroit in 2019. We actually moved to San Diego this year and if you didn't already know that, you should be subscribed to my channel because I did a whole moving series. And I'd say the only major update we've made to how it's all set up is we did a lot of wire management here in San Diego that we did not do back in Detroit. Now you could really fall into the rabbit hole known as wire slash cable management. And we did for a second through all the subreddits that we found of cable management, but really we were trying to be as simple as possible while being as aesthetic as possible without worrying about it too much. And that's kind of what I share with you guys on this channel anyway, right? Attainable interior design tips and tricks. So if you're curious to see how we kind of made all of the wires that are coming out of two PCs on this desk and made it look a little bit aesthetically pleasing, uh, quick plug for my office makeover where I actually show you exactly how I did that. So go click the link if you wanna see that. And I will leave the links to what we used for cable management down below in the description box, so don't forget to check that out. But basically we used cable raceways on the back of the desk to hold all of the major wires. We used a lot of zip ties, uh, those Velcro ties, just anything we could get our hands on. Another thing that we did was we ran a lot of wires on the bottom of the countertop so that you couldn't really see it if you were just standing there looking at the desk. Uh, we used these little clippy things technical terms, again, I'll leave everything down below, to adhere the clip to the bottom of the counter and then put the wire through the clip, if that makes sense. Again, I show you better in my office makeover. <laughs> and going back to what I mentioned before about the function of the risers, originally we only had that space between the tops of the Alex drawers and the bottom of the countertop just for aesthetic reasons but we ended up using it actually for our work laptops. So we actually ran the wires that connected our work laptops to our monitors on the bottom of the counter, and we had it set up so that we could actually put our laptops on top of the Alex drawers, kind of in that space, and it made it look a little bit nicer and also kept us from keeping our laptops on top of our desk and taking up valuable space. So that was a great outcome from something that we didn't really plan. And one last update before I answer some of the most commonly asked questions. 
we noticed that there has actually been a little bit of wear on the top of our Carl B countertop. Tommy does a lot of gaming on his side, so we actually found out that where he's using his mouse, because he's like, you know, moving around a lot and like clicking for all the games, you can tell I'm not a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> we noticed that there's actually some wearing down of the wood in those areas. So if you're using the Carlby countertop the same way we are, which is for a desk, I would highly recommend getting a mouse pad or even one of those like bigger pads that holds your keyboard and your mouse just to be safe. All right, now it is time for the most commonly asked questions that I did a terrible job of explaining in my last video. Forgive me, I was new to YouTube. <laughs> The number one question that was asked, and I get it, I get it, that was totally on me, is all of this. All of this. In my last video, it seemed like I was only using two Alex doors on the sides of the countertop, and there was nothing in between to hold that really, really long countertop. So everyone was asking, is your countertop sagging in the middle at this point? Like, what are you doing with the sagging? Watch out for the sagging. And I appreciate you, that is true. But we actually used three Alex drawers. So two on the ends and one in the middle so that we could slide our two chairs in between those openings. So we do not have any sagging. If you guys don't want to purchase three whole Alex drawers, what I would recommend doing is getting those two Alex drawers for the ends of your table and then Ikea has these like table legs that you can purchase so that you can put them in the middle because you definitely do need that stability if you're going to use as long of a countertop as we did. Our 98 inch countertop is, is huge. So you're gonna need that for the middle. Another great commonly asked question was, do you have room for your legs in there and for your chairs? Because you have, you know, those three sets of drawers and two chairs that need to fit in between. And my answer is, yeah, yeah, we have we have a good enough room. It's not like you can like scoot side to side in your spot. Your chairs kind of perfectly fit right underneath the desk. I have room to like wiggle my feet and everything. I just can't go side to side with my full chair, if that makes sense. But honestly, that's that's perfectly fine. That's what I wanted in a desk anyway. So it is perfect for fitting two chairs underneath and, and two bodies. Another great question that I stupidly didn't answer in my last one was, uh, what are the dimensions for this desk? Great question. It is 98 inches long, 26 inches wide, and 33 inches tall. Again, it's 33 inches tall because of the risers. So if you didn't have the risers, it would be shorter because the countertop would just rest on the Alex drawers. And another great commonly asked question is because of the risers, does your office chair kind of sit at an awkward height versus the desk? And I would say to that, as long as you have an office chair that can, you know, like lift up, you will be perfectly fine. That is it for my most commonly asked questions. That is a quick update for you guys on how my Ikea desk hack is doing today. I just did the quick counting in my head and we've used this desk for three years now and I can definitely foresee us using it for at least three more years. So there you have it. Again, if this video provided any sort of insight or inspiration for you, I would so appreciate it if you could hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. And if you are interested in seeing my other interior design or DIY ideas, I am still going through room by room and making over our new San Diego apartment. So. Don't forget to subscribe to see that. Oh, and also if you have another Ikea hack that you want me to try out, let me know in the comments down below. Definitely interested. I love Ikea hacks. I appreciate you guys watching today as I do every day and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.